Uh, I'm Rafael. Uh, I'm a senior data engineering manager uh, at Quinto Andar. Uh, and for accessibility, uh, I'm a uh, light skinned man uh, wearing glasses, um, and I'm at my home office. Uh, so uh, before uh, anything, we would like to give you guys a little bit of context of what is Quinto Andar, um, besides being the second largest startup in Brazil. Um, Quinto Andar, which can be uh, roughly translated to fifth floor, is a company uh, created to simplify the lives of those looking for a new home. And since the beginning, we are at the center of a, um, I would say, global transformation of the real estate industry, uh, being the default destination for housing. So uh, we have uh, digitalized the whole process. So no one has to go through a tedious and bureaucratic one to find your next home. Uh, we are currently in um, 40 cities in Brazil and expanding uh, to Mexico uh, really soon. Um, so uh, on, on the inside, um, we have, uh, along with several uh, product and, and operation teams, um, a data area responsible to support this decision making. Um, and we subdivide that area in uh, data engineering, data analytics, machine learning, and data science teams with dedicated focus. And uh, well, uh, in order to, to make data available to uh, not only those teams, but, but also uh, to the entire company, We've chosen Airflow uh, as the main platform for controlling ELT jobs um, and also machine learning pipelines. Um, Airflow uh, helps us um, extract data from dozens of sources and to to feed and enrich our analytical database with uh, information related to uh, renting and selling events of our business, such as um, bookings, contracts, visits house characteristics and, and etc. cetera. So um, as I was saying, right now we use uh, GCP's Composer to leverage uh, the entire Airflow infrastructure, um, which uh, since the very beginning has grown its DAG number over 500% in less than two years. And uh, all that gives us more than 5,000 daily executions. Well, mostly because uh, our context breakdown strategy allows us to really separate uh, pipelines, bringing, uh, of course, the gain of governance and, and resource usage. Um, so um, at first, um, Airflow figured uh, for us both as a, a job orchestrator and a job executor. Um, the Airflow instance was uh, first implemented in an Elastic Compute Cloud um, and AWS uh, EC2 uh, with a single instance. Well, in other words, a unique node um, containing um, the scheduler, the web server, and the local worker processes that uh, all are responsible for, uh, uh, well, not only orchestrating, but also for uh, executing tasks. And, well, for some time, uh, this approach performed pretty well, actually. Um, however, the amount of data in, in, in the pipeline complexity uh, uh, grew uh, as the company's business expansion did. And, well, as you can imagine, uh, it reflected in our workflows. Um, so we needed to constantly increase uh, the resources of our EC2 to make it possible to parse all data frames into the specific file formats and uh, well load them into uh, our data lake. But um, uh, well, everything has a limit, right? Um, from time to time, uh, memory and, and disk crashes begin to happen uh, uh, more frequently. Um, and well, as a result, uh, unfortunately, some main DAG duration time increased from minutes to hours because of the need of manual interaction, uh, uh, delaying the entire uh, uh, data selling. So um, at this point, we had hundreds of allocated RAM and, and, and disk for handling performance issues, which kind of implying that continuously upgrading the EC2 machine size was not an option anymore, um, since all the components uh, would uh, still execute in the same machine. Well, and well, not only that, but uh, network bandwidth, um, disk utilization, and in memory operations would uh, continue concurring in, in the machine resources, being also a unique point of failure. 
Um, so um, with this approach, uh, our pipeline wouldn't uh, be alive for much longer. Um, it was then uh, necessary to redesign this, uh, this architecture of our data ecosystem to support uh, our business growing pace, thus delivering data uh, at the earliest uh, and guaranteeing now that our um, data lovers, uh, if I may, um, owned the necessary information on the schedule set. Um, so uh, Lucas will, will show you how we handle this entire new architecture and well, how we have overcome the challenges I mentioned. Um, Lucas, you're up. All right, thank you, Ribaldo. Uh, so uh, I'm Lucas, I'm the data engineer here at Quintandar. And let's see about something about our orchestration strategy then. And as Ribaldo said, we thought our whole data ecosystem here at Quintandar and consequently, a flows architecture. So we created the single instance and adopted the multi-node approach using the Google Cloud Composer on GCP, and IPAS that serves on our flow multi-node instance. Uh, this distributed approach gives us more power to process a bigger number of jobs in parallel and improve our capacity to support the expected growth of our company and consequently, the growth of our data platform. We can see here uh, in this scheme that in such a multi-node approach, the web server, the scheduler, the executor, they run independently in distinct nodes. And the salary queue handles the tasks concomitantly until the workers are able to execute them, respecting the parallelism thresholds, but the subject for another conversation. And the composer is self-managed. Thus, we can focus on supporting the business demands more than caring about the infrastructure, right? And in addition, as he about said, our company is growing nationally, uh, is growing nationally, and is going also to international expansion. And with this architecture here, we think we are prepared to quick support uh, the expected growth by scaling up horizontally or vertically without much effort from other engineers. Um, well. It is true that there are plenty of improvements that can be addressed yet in Composer, but we agree that the enhancements and upgrades like increasing the number of nodes, updating node types and more, they are quick and easy tasks with Composer. And beyond this single to move node shift, we also reshaped the Airflow's responsibility and now it acts uniquely as an orchestrator, doing only what it was designed for. Before, Airflow was the center of a coupled architecture, and now it only uh, it is only the orchestrator of the jobs, and the jobs you actually execute via Spark jobs on Databricks. We can see that Airflow doesn't own anymore the responsibilities, uh, all the responsibilities. Uh, rather than that, it is responsible uniquely for scheduling and triggering the tasks externally, and the processing is actually and distributed over the Databricks clusters. So our flow doesn't need to know uh, about the other data services we have and more. And it just manages, or I could say, it orchestrates the jobs. As you can see here, uh, our flow starts the job in Databricks or whatever else you want to run our jobs. And then our flow heartbeats the jobs until the end to mark its tasks as success or failure. Uh, Okay, but how does this starting and heart beating work, right? If you take a look closer in our, in our DAGs, we can see that a DAG is responsible for create its own cluster on Databricks, create, uh, start the Spark jobs on the created cluster from, for executing the operation. Here you have two operations. And finally, terminate the cluster when the jobs are finished. In the interaction with Databricks, is performed performer by Airflow via Databricks operators uh, who are responsible for communicating with the cluster API and for executing the operations inside the clusters. And the cluster is sharpened according to each DAG necessity and requirement. And this gives us pretty flexibility in running different job types beyond a more stable usage of our resource. Okay, so recapping, uh, we use our flow with Node uh, strictly as an orchestrator and we run the ELT jobs on the Databricks clusters. Nice. And uh, in the last summit, we presented to you the concept of our tool for mediating the DAGs cross-dependence, 
but you could have wondered why do these guys have so many decks with cross deafness, right? So let me quickly deep dive into our airflow pipelines and share our decks uh, organizational approach with you guys. Um, we have data that are extracted from the source to the data lake, then the data lake they are cleaned, enriched, modeled with various other data source. And for doing that, we have a complex pipeline. And we think of our pipeline as a composition of a macro graph with internal dependence. The, arrow, the arrows here represent the dependence. And that said, we can't process everything at the same time, of course, because there are some jobs that depends on another, um, like an enrichment that previews need the, that previews need the data to be cleaned, or a modeling that needs the data to be enriched. So we are, uh, actually we want to explore the maximum of our pipeline parallelism and deliver data at the earliest. But in our data lovers, as we call our data stakeholders, love to have fresh data. So we need to run our jobs as synchronously as, a, as possible. In MNGs, we divide these, uh, the processing into specialized bags according to the context of the operations and according to the layer to which the DAG, to which the DAG we operate data. Now we can see that each DAG is, is responsible for a small context uh, processing uh, and we see those decks as fragments of the macro deck that I had shown you. And according to the context, the deck will be specialized on each of the three layers you can see here. So, uh, ingestion cleansing, enrichment, or modeling. And okay, and finally, as I said, each deck, in other words, each part of that macro graph is triggered as soon as it can execute. Of course, the schedules of these decks are not fixed, and for handling all this triggering intelligence, we count on our DEX cross dependence mediator that uh, it is an uh, ex external agent that triggers everything at the same at the right times. We have an article in our tech blog explaining it if you are interested, and you can read in this link. Now, oh, guys, uh, this is how we do things here at Kintondar, at least for now, <laughs> because our flow is growing fast as we do. And we definitely shall continue evolving our data platform for now. Uh, let's uh, wrap up some of what we achieved with this approach. Thinking in, on the way we organize our pipeline, it, uh, this approach allows us to, uh, to have specialized DAGs or DAGs with small context, I could say. Uh, this sort of DAGs have a small number of dependencies, and then they are able to start earlier and finish sooner than before, entitling this entire downstream to also uh, execute sooner, what is perfect for us. And on the other hand, think about the platform as a whole. This approach uh, allows us to have dedicated clusters that operate suite to the DAG requirement with dedicated resources. For example, due to the different types of operations that each job performs, some demand machine with more memory, while others need high CPU configuration instead. And it eliminates the overload on their flows machine and it distributes it, distributes it over the dedicated clusters. So we don't worry if all the DAGs execute at the same time because we have our, our flow only dealing with task orchestration and job monitoring. Also, for the same reason, we don't have anymore a single point of failure since we have exclusive machines processing jobs. For example, if a job fails due to an out of memory exception, this won't impact the other jobs. And beyond that, we have a closed scope for, scope for the problems. For example, if something fails on our flow, we know that is an orchestration problem. On the other hand, if something fails on the job itself, uh, on Databricks, we know it is a problem regarding the data processing. So uh, since our decks are pretty general, or I could say they are just agnostic workflows that execute Spark jobs, we can easily create automatized templates to create uh, decks via deck builders, cut cutter, etc. And beyond being efficient in time of execution, the solution and all these leads to a more sustainable usage of our resource. 
And finally, uh, all this gives us the flexibility to focus our engineering effort much more on business demands than on infrastructure or on the services platform, okay? Um, okay, guys, uh, this is a little bit of our orchestration strategy, and I will let Ribaldo conclude here. It's up to you, Ribaldo. Uh, all right. Um, thanks, Lucas. Um, so, um, as, as we all know, um, well, in order to, to have a strategic decision, um, one has to create a reliable, um, reliable data pipelines. And well, in order to have those data pipelines, uh, one has to design a, a resilient and scalable infrastructure. Um, so our goal here was to uh, define and implement a, a solid base for moving data from a point to another. And that involved not only um, separating DAGs into business contexts, but also to define dedicated resources uh, for specific operations. Um, well, and all that uh, allowed us to create processes running on Spark to um, ingest, to clean, transform, and also model data um, to make sure different necessities may have fine-tuned resources. And uh, it also allowed us um, to have a, a, a optimization uh, regarding who's triggering uh, Spark jobs. Um, this is Airflow, um, which is now focused on only orchestrating pipelines with very specific resources. Um, well, of course, not all are roses, right? Um, we understand that uh, this strategy uh, brings some challenges. Uh, for example, since we are, we are uh, spreading the processing, uh, how can we put everything back together for uh, monitoring and, and making sure that we have a, a macro vision? Um, or even more, uh, how can we centralize uh, DAG and also cluster creation to avoid code redundancy or, or standard archivists? Um, but uh, actually, we are uh, quite confident uh, to move forward with this whole solution and uh, overcome the challenges so our platform continues to have uh, an elastic behavior, allowing your flow to, um, to behave uniquely as a, an orchestrator. Um, so I think that's, that's it. Uh, uh, we hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, Lucas and I certainly had a blast. So thank you very much.